Let's recreate our first animation using some new tools and the automatic in-betweening functions. First, draw the circle somewhere in the middle of the frame. Click the down arrow for the tools and select the iron tool. Use this tool to straighten out any unevenness in the surface. Select the point edit tool, zoom in by scrolling with your mouse wheel, and readjust these points. Select the circle in the level strip, right click, and add frames, starting with frame 2 and ending on frame 8. Copy this first drawing and paste into frame 8. Drag the red onion skin tab upward to frame 1 from frame 8. Select the pinch tool, check the manual box, and adjust its initial size. Drag over the small green box to adjust the influence of this tool. Drag some corners from our circle to try to approximate a square shape. Use the iron tool again to straighten out the sides. Select the control point editor tool, zoom into your drawing, and adjust these points to form corners and smooth sides. Moving the bezier handles closer to the control point creates a corner point. Select all the drawings in the level strip, click the In Between tab, and then In Between. Right-click in the main view and deactivate the onion skins. Right-click in the level strip again and select Add to X Sheet. This always creates a new level in the X Sheet. Select the first column and press Delete. Scroll through these cells to check your animation. From the Windows menu, select Schematic. Scroll with your mouse wheel to zoom in and click this icon, which creates a path. Since the control point editor was active, we can see the path in the view. Select the brush tool and draw a new path. This new drawing will replace the default path. Click Yes, and our level is automatically assigned to the beginning of the path. Having selected the Level Editor tool and clicking in the schematic on Column 1, we can adjust the starting position of Frame 1 along the path. In essence, this creates a keyframe at the beginning of the path for that frame. Selecting the last frame in the level and having Position checked, move the drawing on Frame 8 to this location. Clicking the loop icon in the playback controls shows that our animation occupies the entire length of the arc. Moving the drawing on frame 8 to the top of the arc is the position we'll need for the rest of the animation. We can go ahead and close the schematic window for the time being. Scroll to the last frame in the level strip, right click, and select Add Frames. Add frames from 9 to 27. Copy the last completed drawing in the level strip and paste it on frame 18 using the Paste Into command. Select the Pinch tool from the Tool panel Adjust the size of its influence, and then pull as shown. Choose the Selection tool, adjusting the drawing as a whole, dragging the drawing upward with the double arrow tool. 
drag outward in the same way. In the level strip, select the square and all the drawings in between to the last frame and click In Between. The automatic in-betweener produces a good result. Copy the last drawing in the level strip, scroll to frame 18, and choose Paste Into. Start adjusting this last drawing by using the Selection tool. Switch to the Pinch tool and adjust its influence, and then continue to modify this frame. In case you haven't already guessed, we want the final morph in our animation to appear as a sack of flour. We'll continue animating with the sack of flour, giving it lifelike human qualities. The pinch tool is adequate for making rough adjustments, but we really need the control point editor to make finer adjustments. Our final goal for this particular drawing is to produce an overweight and slightly pudgy sack of flour. An ideal character for giving life to an inanimate object and practicing the animation of this object. Select all the frames in the level strip, including this drawing, all the way to the last drawing we made, and select In Between. If some of the drawings are not well formed, you can try again selecting fewer frames, choosing the In Between command again. This often produces a better result. Right-click again in the main view and deactivate the onion skins. Press the loop icon in the playback controls and observe your animation. You can also scroll slowly through the animation using the X sheet as shown. To add all our new drawings to the X sheet, select them in the level strip, right click and select Expose in X sheet. Grabbing the cells in this column by the light green handle Put them underneath the existing cells in the first column. Check your animation. Select frame 14 in the X sheet and the Level Edit tool and drag it to this position along the arc. Select the last frame and drag it to the end position. Select the last cell in the X sheet and drag the tab down to give a few static frames at the end of the animation. Really, what we've produced so far is just a rough animation with very little life. We have a morph and a movement. However, for success, we'll need a lot more than this.